I actually didn't recognize my own voice. Uh, it's, it sounded different. Uh, I, whether I had a cold or something at the time, I don't know. Sir Patrick, good to see you again, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, very well. And you look great. I'm doing, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. It is an honor to speak with you, sir. I, I, you've been such a big part of my life growing up. And I honestly can't remember a part of my life where I was in love with television and movies that you weren't a part of that. So, so thank you for being just such a massive, massive part of my life growing up. I thank you for it. Well, that's very kind of you to say so. And, uh, you know, uh, although it's, these are not unfamiliar words, they still, every time I hear them, mean so much to me. Uh, I'm very proud of what we did with Next Generation, particularly, and that my career should have pushed me in that direction. Well, I'm going to start with there, because obviously you've been playing Jean-Luc Picard since 1987, so 35 years. So thinking back to the very first time you ever heard action on Next Generation, all the way to the most recent time you heard cut on Picard, what's the most interesting thing you've discovered about who this man is over your three and a half decades playing him? I think th the most important thing, and it may be interesting to me, was that uh, when I met with Akiva Goldsman and Alex Kurtzman and, 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 and Michael Chabon to discuss the possibility of a series. I said to them that I was only coming face to face with them because I respected them so much. I wanted to say face to face that I was not going to accept their offer. <laughs> and, and then they, they said, fine. And then they talked to me and then I had them put it all in a letter. They sent me over 30 pages of pitch and, um, what drew me finally to it was that decades had passed, but they assured me that the decades of my life that had passed and the decades of Jean-Luc's life would be reflected in the same way. So there would be no possibility of me trying to behave like Captain Jean-Luc Picard from Next Generation. No, he, is, he has lived... 35 years and things are very different. And I found that so attractive that I could introduce elements from my own life, which I had experienced as the decades went by, which, which could become part of the new Jean-Luc. And he is a new Jean-Luc because he's no longer sitting in the captain's chair of the Enterprise. He's a retired admiral. You know, that's really what I love about the show. And I kind of want to sort of expand on that because between Picard and really Logan, you've gotten two very unique opportunities to sort of have kind of like a one last ride for, for two of your most iconic characters, if that is in fact where Picard is heading. I'm curious about your attitude toward sort of the, the one last ride idea, getting a storyline that allows maybe us or you to say goodbye to a character, how it impacts your ability to let a character go, because you don't always get that. Sometimes you hear cut for the last time and then that's it, you have to move on. Yeah, this has been a unique experience. Um, actually comparable only with Shakespeare because Shakespeare is in my life on a daily basis, almost. And, um, and the same has been the case for uh, for Star Trek and for um, uh, X-Men, yeah. that, that they have reflected my own life during this time. And it's that often can happen with any kind of role that you receive. But with these two concepts, it's been extraordinarily pr predictionary. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask this next question under the guise of, I love this show and I don't want it to end anytime soon. But, but with Logan, we were given the opportunity to say goodbye to Charles Xavier before he passed away. As an actor who I'm assuming loves Jean-Luc Picard, do you want to see his death? Is that a direction that would give you any kind of peace letting go of him? No, Jean-Luc and, and uh, Professor Xavier were very, very different people. Um, no, uh, Jean-Luc Picard, is going to live forever. I love that. You mentioned uh, Shakespeare and you mentioned performing on stage. And I've actually seen you, I saw you with TR Knight uh, on Broadway and it was just such an electrifying performance. Um, is there a through line between how you perform 
a character on stage versus how you perform him on an illustrious set? Is it this, do you do, is it the same skill set? Is it the same muscles? Is, is there, do, does a live audience or not make any impact whatsoever? It, it is technically very, very different, especially with the, uh, the improvement of technology in filmmaking. Nowadays, on the set, a lot of actors talk no longer English. This is how they do their performance. And I have played scenes recently with someone with whom I'm standing face to face, and I have to wear an earplug in order to hear their dialogue. So you can't get away with that on a stage because, you know, there are- I was in the back people. row and I heard you. Well, um, the very first time I ever saw a film camera, and I was standing in front of the lens to do a job of work. Um, I was very blessed to be playing a scene, a very short scene, very small scene, with one of my heroes of the time, who was Rod Steiger, um, the, the wonderful, wonderful American film and stage actor. And we had, he invited me to have lunch with him. He heard this was my first time ever on camera. So I had lunch in his trailer. And one of the things he said to me was, what you have to understand, Patrick, about film acting is that the camera photographs thoughts. And it is uh, a phrase which has lived with me ever since. Thank you, Rod, very much and rest in peace. Oh, um, I love that. It, uh, of course, it can apply to the stage because you can communicate without words at times and it can be very, very potent. You know, so much uh, about great storytelling is just asking what if. What if this character did this thing in this place with this other character? What would happen? So I'm going to have just fun with you for one moment and ask you just a fun what if. What if Professor X met Doctor Strange? What, what do you think would happen? Professor X would be extraordinarily cautious <laughs> and watchful and perhaps feel a little insecure because there is something that is potentially dangerous about this man. And uh, I, think that would, I think that would put uh, Professor Xavier on guard. I love that. I was wondering if you could take me back to Super Bowl Sunday a few weeks back. You're watching the game. You're trying to enjoy yourself. Everyone on the planet's watching it. And then a commercial comes on for a Marvel movie in which someone kind of sounds like you. How quickly does your phone go off? And is there any part of you that thinks, I really just want to watch the game. I, 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 I wasn't prepared for this. Well, I had my phone turned off as it happened. And so I didn't hear anything. It wasn't until the next morning when I woke up and looked at my phone and found that I had been bombarded with the responses and that my PR people had sent me reactions that they had, uh, they had detailed and passed on to me. And um, I actually didn't recognize my own voice. Uh, it's, it sounded different. Uh, I, whether I had a cold or something at the time, I don't know. But I was astonished and all they saw was the back of my shoulder and I think my earlobe, nothing else, that there would have been so many connections made. Um, but I, it, it, uh, it pleased me. It's a, it was a beautiful, beautiful moment. I'm going to wrap up sort of where we began because I was telling you that you've been such a big part of my life. You were my first Star Trek captain. I cherished the memory that my dad and I had seeing uh, the X-Men films together. I saw you were my first Broadway play I ever saw whenever I was in New York. I can't remember a period of my life that you weren't a part of. As an actor, is that the goal? To, to make us feel like, like, I, like I know you, like, like, you're, you're like you're an old friend, like you're a part of my family. Because I, I know that I'm a stranger to you, but I, I look at you and I think, this is my friend. I've known this man for years. It never occurred to me when I went into this profession <clears throat> that I would want to influence the way people felt or the way they saw the world. But increasingly, as I have done this job, I have seen that as being my primary uh, activity in this, that I want to have that impact. I remember someone telling me when they had seen, I did a one man show of A Christmas Carol, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they said, I wish you could see the faces of the people going out of the theater because they've just had an experience they did not expect to have 
with Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And th that's the kind of thing that is music to my ears. Well, I've got to tell you, Sir Patrick, I, I begged for this interview and, and everyone uh, behind the scenes with your team was unbelievably kind enough to, to set it up. And you were unbelievably kind to give me a few minutes of your time. And, and I got to tell you, it's nothing short of an honor, sir. It's good to see you again. Jake, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, sir. I hope you and your family are doing well. I hope to see you in person soon. Thank you. And Hi. we are. Hi. Good to see you, sir. Where we're going, we don't need roads.